Hello. This is Coffee Clatch Bout Bonzo. It's actually not really called that. But we're going to talk about, I'm putting this on for my hearing protection. Actually, you know I won't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live by nature's rules, baby. Take some chances and not, I'm going to mess my ears up. Jermaker. Or Dire Maker. Now, the song to a lot of people is like a throwaway, apparently. There's a Led Zeppelin book that I have upstairs where the author, the guy that actually wrote the book that's going on praising all the songs, it's the one that has, I think, Plant, Zepp's on the cover, and it's, you know, it looks like Madison Square Garden, and it might be Days Confused, the songs or something. Listen how they just trash Jamaica. Like, oh, sorry, guys, trying to do reggae, sorry. If they were really trying to do reggae, I mean, Robert Plant would have been like, oh, 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 man, you... I mean, he would have been trying to sing reggae right? All right, here's the deal. The beauty of that recording, I mean, it's a good song, you know? I mean, if you heard someone else doing a cover at a bar, you'd be like... You know what I mean? But because it's Zeppelin and because of that particular recording, that actual artistic statement of the recording sonically is incredible and kind of really encapsulate almost perfectly the fattest Led Zeppelin sound of all time, okay? Here's a couple things about it. I know it was, uh, they said it was recorded at uh, Stargroves, or at least the drums, so I always, that's what they said in a book I read somewhere. But they slowed the tape down. And what I think they did, I mean, it slowed down to thicken it up. I mean, if you have analog tape, and instead of it going, let's say, at 30 inches per second, you slow it down so it's going at maybe 20 inches. I mean, I don't know how they'd actually do it. I know they do like 15 inches per second or 30, that they, you know, whatever. But if you slow it down, it'll actually slow down. Everything will come down and pitch a little bit. But it's, it's, it lasts longer, right? So if I went, like in that other video I made, if I went, it'd be like, shh. But... You know what I'm saying? So with the drums. Okay, now I know that's not how he did it, but you get the idea. I'll play it the way he did in a minute. But anyway, just listen to the drums, the way the slowing down of the tape fattens the sound of the drums and the cymbals. And listen to that bass line John Paul Jones is playing. JPJ is playing that walking sort of, I, with a pick, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, it's, it's almost like a Beatles-y 1965, like when, when in those books where McCartney would say, oh, we're not getting the fat bass sound, you know, and so they tried to beef it up a little in mid-60s at Abbey Road and stuff. But when you listen to, like, when McCartney would play the bass, it has like that, it just has that fat punch. It's just the, it, it makes the song, in addition to 10,000 other things. And then there's also the piano that goes the whole time. Dun, 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 dun. You hear that barely in there, okay? Of course, uh, Jimmy Page's guitar playing, Plant's vocals, God love him. But what they did, I think, is they tracked the tune. Essentially, I think the drums and the bass and maybe the guitars are slowed down. And everything except Page's uh, vocal. Plant's vocal, sorry. So, here we are in the song. The fattest sounding, I think, honestly, sounding Led Zeppelin song on recording the whole time of the planet on this earth. Hang on, Max. It's alright, buddy. So the tune kicks in, right? Uh, I think what he does on the drums. Okay, you could do that. Or you could go. You know, let's not even get into it. Let's just call it this. Come in. Bottom plays, this is a real fast just for drums. Bottom plays what I think is by and large, it's not a completely random, but he doesn't really do the same pattern the whole time. It's essentially like. Although there's a whole hell of a lot more just single notes. There's, there, there's some of these. Okay? But they don't, it's not every other time. I mean, just if you listen to it, though, the, to me, those... really dance around uh, Plant's vocal 
to me, if you listen to it. Like, it really seems like when he was singing it, when they tracked it, he really kind of did it, like, in certain spots as it relates to the vocal, in my opinion. So I'm not going to say, I don't want to go through and say, well, <laughs> in the first bar, he puts, there's here, and then in the second bar, there's here, and then the third one's like the one we did way back, where there's two, you know, we're not going to get into that, okay? But what we do, I did make some notes, um, if I can find them, but just because I want to remember just what the hell I'm talking about. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so the song kicks in, okay? You have that fill. Immediately you hear a shaker. I think it's like one of those gourd things that has the balls on it that are sort of like... And you kind of go... And the whole song you hear... And it actually really almost sounds just like that. Okay? And it's kind of on... I think that that would be at the same note as the piano underneath. Anyway, but we're getting somewhere to sheer quality. Now what happens is, we come into at the 21 point mark, which is a very sig significant moment, is the crash. Da, 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 da. You don't have to go. Okay? I'm going to keep you out. We're going to do it on this one. But here, Bottom does a very gentle night as his hand, when he do those grace notes and stuff, his hand look like, I have the shakes, right? I don't want really to about that. But Bottom very, if you look at him, even in rock and roll, when he's doing like that, when he does that, he's not going. It's a very light, it's a... It's a very light thing with his left hand. The point is, is when we get to that crash, it might just, it might just be, or, or, whatever it is. There's definitely a, it almost sounds as long as. Although it's not, because I think what it is, is he does that into it. But I think it's a sonic illusion brought about by a delay they were using on the recording. It, some, sometimes when you hear on the drum, so you'll hear like... On that intro, you don't hear it all the time, but at certain times you'll hear it. It's almost like the drum goes, bah! It's a, there's a delay, like a half second delay. Like... Just like that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's fucking true. Real faintly. Da! Slightly. And I think that feeds into the front end of it. The one that would come after that. Comes in right at the time. I know this is for diehard, crazy Led Zeppelin people like myself, because I can assure you, I am crazy. That at the same time is as something that would start after it. So you don't have to, you don't have to go. Okay, so the you don't have to go. But at, right before he does that, that. You have the the delay of of that starting it now only to diehard crazy people like myself that is very important. I can guarantee you there's so many drummers that have heard that been like God damn listen to that crash. You can't sum up a B8 alloy sounding crash any more than you can at that point on that recording, which is at the 21 second mark. Just listen to it. You don't have to. I mean, it's crazy. Now, the fact that the tape is slowed down adds to the depth of it, not to mention uh, other of Paige's wizardry. So then we get to the first fill. 34. You don't have to go. You don't have to go. Oh, no, that's not there. That's the other one. This one goes, you don't have to. Bear with me here. This is reality. 
go. Give me, give me, I'm going to look at my notes. Be patient here. Smoke them if you got them. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't believe I can't remember this fill. We're going to come back to it because I'm not going to destroy this video because of it because this takes too long to freaking make. And then you have it 50. We're going to come back to the 34 because it's going to come back to me because this is how I actually make my videos. I don't want to go back and do it. So 59, you have the... Uh, okay? That's a beefcake. That's just a classic bottom... And it sounds so beefy on those drums. Okay, we bust into that. Now what we're going to do, we get another crash caused by Bonham's... With that... But again, because of the crash right before it, I think you get that same effect as you did back at the greatest crash in the whole wide world uh, at the 21 second mark. Okay. Now we're at 124. You have plant vokes. This is what, you know why I wrote down plant vokes? <laughs> it's because you, you, the song's going, right? <laughs> Baby, I love your heart. Like right there, that's what he does. Baby, I love your heart. But then instantaneously, <laughs> we're carried to his vocal back to, oh, 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 like he's back to soft again. Which you hear a lot these days in digital editing, but it's not that common back in those days. I mean, you don't really notice it. Conceivably, he could have sang it just like that. But it is totally like, oh, baby, I love you. Oh, oh. I mean, he's right back in your face with the... But that is great, though. And, and that is classic plant, which also is part of the reason why this song rules so much, the recording itself. Um, then the fill. You have, there's a fill at 144. But what happens is, this is the one that goes... The second one that I'm on now, which is uh, 144, is... Okay? It's a little tricky to count it. I used to think that maybe it was, it was, it was sort of an edited, maybe a fill they edited in. But, I mean, it's classic Bonham. Yeah. And then, there's more. And then what happens is, at 159, what we have is uh, 159, one of the warmest moments in my heart about this song, which is so classic Robert Plant. Uh, you hurt me to my soul. Oh, you heard right there. You know why there's only one Robert Plant in the whole wide world? Because listen to it. 150 hour goes, you hurt me to my... That classic plant. Nobody, it's like, oh, there it is, as big as life. Frame it. Okay. And then 209, we get the second fill, which I call, in a related series of fills, the first of the related series of fills is... Second one, this one being. Okay? Conceivably, it could be a slightly reasonable facsimile thereof. But I think it's. One more time. Okay? That's what you're going to get out of me for that. Okay, so then that's that. And then, um, and then we go into the um, uh, solo. So listen in the solo here. Listen to the bass line. Listen to John Paul Jones's bass line. I mean, that is the fattest. The combination 
That whole, anybody who knows, any diehard audiophile, if, even if they hate Zeppelin, if you saw them, some, they're like closet level. Yeah, actually, you know what, that is one of the coolest sounding recordings of all time. It just is. It's the recording proper, okay? Even if Bonham had semi, if his fills weren't even all that hot, the, the sound of it. You know, like Walk on the Wild Side, uh, Lou Reed, I mean, just there's certain recordings that just sound unbelievable. This is one of them, and it's the, I would have to call it, but I call it the penultimate or the ultimate sounding Led Zeppelin recording. Okay. The solo. Now what happens is, listen to the bass in there. Now we have the fill. We have that great fill. Um, okay. Okay. Um, um, it doesn't come after that part, but it's like. It's just, it's golden. And there is a 15-inch pair of hi-hats. BA probably sound edged. We don't know. We actually weren't there, but... Oh, hang on. There's no bass drum under that hi-hat. Okay? So, and that is beefcake. That is just beefcake. Who else would play a fill like that? I don't know. So then we have here... As we move on to our little booklet. Okay, now the shaker here. This is important. Because this is some weird kind of spooky shit to me. Just a little bit. In Jamaica, what starts to happen in the tune at some point uh, is you have a couple things happen. Remember how I was saying the... Oh, uh, there's a shaker. Oh, 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 oh. You... Sh Okay, remember the shaker I was talking about? Well, at about, at or around 352, the shaker actually starts to almost go tss, tss, like a person actually saying tss, tss, which I think it really might be. Or maybe it's the, it might be the uh, aural specter of Aleister Crowley's head sneaking its way into the, um, into the studio there. <laughs> And you really hear it. And I'm just saying, for diehard supplement files, listen to it. At 352 to 357, you'll hear what is normally the sh sh kind of go tss, tss, tss. Like, it, it kind of gets in your face. But there's no doubt, at 4, at 359.8 into 4, you hear two very clear tss, tss, right in your face. I'm telling you, Aleister Crowley's head just materialized in the studio and that bled into a microphone. All right. So at 317, uh, no, we're back to 317. Well, we had to put that little aside in there. So now we have 317. You have, babe, please, please, please. Okay, so you, you so that would be. embarrassing I can't I can't I'm gonna have to edit in these freaking fills so I'm gonna drop it in here me actually doing that fill okay it's a fucking pain in the ass insert okay there's the insert okay now we have a 324 uh, and the 330 fill ooh I love you baby I'm not sure what the hell that means but I don't think it's that important Oh yeah, ooh, 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 now. Boom, pa, mm. <laughs> ha ha! I remember that one. <laughs> Hang on, it's not that. Time out. Uh. Ooh, now. <laughs> All right, well we got that one covered. All right, am I getting sloppy or what the hell's going on here? But then I have something that says 343, oh baby. Uh. Okay, aha. And then we have uh Okay, we know that fill. You don't have to you guys know where these are. This fill is at 343. 
okay? It is the... Now, at least the very first one, in my opinion, there's some snare going on in that flim. The rest, I think, are just toms. Okay, that's my... That's the face I make when I mean it. All right, so 357. There's another fill, which is kind of golden, uh, Colorado-y. Uh, you know, if that... Uh, hang on a second. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> now we are at... Oh, shit. You know what? Yeah, the, the, those... those hmm, hmm. Ah, the fire. At 352, we have... Actually, it's not like that. It's actually more like fire. Just like that. You hear in the freaking recording. Silence! You actually hear fire. Just like it's in your face. I'm going to do it again. Fire. Or is she actually more like hanging? Like this. Fire. Just like that. Again, I think Alistair Crowley's mini me. Uh, popped out of the side and said that into the microphone. Okay, so then we have that. Uh, ah, then we have that da -da 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 on the piano, because remember, the whole time the piano is going, okay? It is. I mean, you hear it in there. It's very faint. But it, da -da 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 -da. Okay, and at that time you have... Actually, you have a couple right there. No, actually, on the da -da 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 is... Something kind of, it's cool though. Listen, because I'm always so distracted by that. Da -da 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 -da. You don't hear the. He just does like a little. Which is very beefcakey in and of its own. So now we have, um, we have another fire. At 414, there's one more fire. I'm serious, okay? And then toward the end, the very end, if you listen and crank up your attenuation, at the very end you hear, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Okay, so this is for die-hard Led Zeppelin freaks like myself only. Um, and of course, if you had the vinyl like I did, then you'd wait for the very beginning of No Quarter to pop on. It would, it would kind of just come up, it, it, which is another of totally unique, ubiquitous. Uh, that might be the ultimate, or the penultimate sounding one, too. But I think that No Quarter was actually recorded for Zeppelin IV. Um, and it wasn't, but, uh, whereas uh, Jermaker was recorded for Houses of the Holy. But I think when they sat down and mixed all that stuff, they, play, they played with the tempo, or the, or the speed of the tape with No Quarter too. They also slowed that down. Anyway, so that's my take on Jermaker. I don't want any other of these pseudo-Led Zeppelin people saying, oh, you know, Zeppelin, we love everything else you do, but, you know, nice try at, Jam at, at uh, <laughs> Jamaican, at reggae, fail, and you know what, you critic? You know, as far as I know, I was a kid. Four or five years old when this freaking record came out, I hadn't heard reggae before. So I listened just to the merits of this sonic recording. So that's what I and other probably diehard Zeppelin people are going to do. So, you know what, it's a, it's a, the song proper, the recording itself is a piece of Zeppelin art capturing the whole mojo and gestalt of Zeppelin recording them. That's what the hell it's all about. Got in that first, well, I did the first fill. What was the second fill? Ah, wait, there's one more fill I'm leaving out, but I might have to duct tape it on to the end. Um... Uh, uh, I don't remember, but I know it's not this. It's definitely not this. 